Hey everybody, Sam here and Angela and welcome to our channel. Welcome to another video from our 1988 Palm Harbor single wide mobile home. We've been working on renovating the interior and we have reached a wonderful milestone which is... We need to put in our ceiling fans and new light fixtures. That's right, we're totally going to get lit in this video. We are here in the living room and we are going to be putting in a new ceiling fan. The old one we had was kind of blah and old. So I wanted something that would go more with our new decor. I wanted one that would fit in with more of a farmhouse theme because that's what we really like is kind of the farmhouse look. So let's go ahead and unbox it, put it together and put it up. I like your knife there. When you can't find a knife, a hole saw will work. It's not a hole saw. What's it called? It's a paddle bit. Paddle bit. Let oh. me have it before you stab the new floor. Or me. Or the wall. Yeah. S stay. Every ceiling fan has its own instructions and different ways of putting it together. So we won't bore you with the details of how to do this, but we'll bring you along and let you watch it be done. <laughs> she noticed that sticker first. <laughs> like, my goodness, look what they wrote on it. And then you started reading it over and over and talking about it. No, I did not. Making me blush. Then here, this goes in too. Ooh. I shaved some hairs off my arm. <laughs> We're done with the fan assembly, so now we're going to go up and work on the ceiling box and get it ready. It wasn't a feature that we specifically sought out, but this fan does come with a Wi-Fi antenna and will connect to your home's network and you can control it through the app. It also is controlled by a regular, probably radio frequency remote because there are no chains or knobs on the fan to turn it on or off and with the light, the same thing. So what Angela is going to put up next is the actual Wi-Fi adapter, antenna, and remote. So just whenever you see this get installed, know that that's what it's for. And that's the kind of the cool little features that this fan also has. You don't have to use the Wi-Fi. You can use the remote, but it's all in one. So it gets put up there regardless. Next, we are going to pick up the fan and put the little ball joint up in the space right here and attach all the cords, wires, whatever you want to call it. So this is going to go over the LED lights and this is the completion of installing it. So we'll be ready to turn it on. I have yet to find where I put the other screws for this. We've got them, but just to say no. It's been four months since we've been able to flip this switch and something happened in here.
That looks awesome. So like we said earlier, this thing can be controlled with Wi-Fi home network. We don't have, okay, our, our home network's over at the camper and it doesn't reach into the house here. So we're not gonna do any kind of setup like that. And I don't know that we'll use it or do that. I mean, I say, I don't know. Angel says, yeah, that'd be cool. But if we're truthful and honest, anyone that lives in any kind of warm climate knows once ceiling fans get turned on, they don't ever turn off, ever, day or night summer winter they don't get a day off so i don't know how much use the wi-fi control will be but it is what it is the biggest thing we don't want to lose is this little remote this is what controls the fan speeds the light on and off and also the color of the light coming from the leds we're able to adjust them to match whatever color range we want from soft white which is honestly kind of yellow or orangish all the way up to daylight. I think there's five different settings, so that's really cool. There's also other cool features such as a timer and one that is weird to, okay, I consider it weird. It's called breeze setting. It, you press it and it adjusts the speed of the fan to simulate a breeze in your home. I don't know who's gonna use that one. Obviously, if you want a fan, if you got a fan, you want the thing on high all the time. So that's the features of the remote and the fan in general. Let's go see what else Angela has planned on our light installation day palooza. So somewhere in the move, our pendant light that goes over our kitchen sink got broke. And to clue you in on where we are at, we are at our kitchen sink in our kitchen. <laughs> and see, it usually hangs about right here. So we had to find another one. Well, to go with the farmhouse theme that I kind of talked about in the living room, we wanted to go more for the dark, like black, bronze we'll look. Rub, we'll rub bronze. So we wanted to get a pendant that would match that. So, cue Sam. We found this one. It has an old rub bronze um, metal fixture hanging down. However, we did not really care for the globe that went on it. So. This, we found out that this one is one that you can switch out the globes on it and we went ahead and found another one which you will see when we install it. Oh, cliffhanger. Yeah. You have to wait, sorry. It won't take very long, I promise. So we're gonna go ahead and hang it up and then you will get to see the neat, cool looking globe that we got to put on it. Let's go. I don't want you to be alarmed. I'm not carrying a set of nunchucks. Watch out, Angel. Might lose his face. What we have here are multiple sections of down rod, which you can use to make this as long as you want. In our case, we only want one section. So it's as easy as untying the knot on the wires that hold it all together and pulling out the sections you don't want. Once you have that, then we can go ahead and thread this together to make this a solid connection between the light base and the down rod. And then we get the ceiling trim ring. With the ceiling trim ring, we then feed the wires through it. And remember to go from outside in. And then this just threads together. There you go. What you're left with, honestly, this looks like a candlestick, but it gets mounted to the ceiling and goes that way. However, what? we got a vaulted ceiling. This is gonna be sticking out like that. I wonder if it's got any kind of flexibility in the joint. Oh no. Is it not? What have we bought? <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> Okay, now there's a little, all right, okay, we've got to figure it out. Thankfully, we don't have very extreme angled vaulted ceilings in the house. What I can do is bend this just a little bit carefully, and I will flex and deform this trim ring, but it'll match the angle we need. It's not going to fall apart or break as long as we don't get too aggressive and actually tear the metal, because there are set screws and nuts inside the washers holding it all together. So, good. 
crisis averted because we were kind of freaking out off camera that, well, we just wasted money. All right, I'm done with my stuff. Now it's off to Angela for the fun things up there on the ceiling. So here we have the mounting bracket that is going to go in between the light fixture and the ceiling box. But what about these things? They're so long. What about what? These. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's on that. It won't. It's on the box? Yeah. So the default machine screws that they give you to go on the ceiling box and then the light pendant goes over and attaches here, they're too long. I want to show you guys a common feature that can be found with a common pair of wire strippers like these that a lot of people either don't know about or may never know when you would use it. Down here near the bottom there are two holes left and right of the center pivot point. One is 8-32, the other is 10-32. These are bolt cutters for these kind of bolts. Additionally, what you're going to find is it is a bolt, but it is also a die. You have to screw the bolt into the pliers. You screw it in like that. It goes all the way through to the outside to the point that you want to cut. At this point, you cut them. So let me do that real quick. I'm going to use a paper towel to cover this so we don't shoot ourselves in the eyes. So at that point we've cut it. The cool feature of the die of this is that you unthread it out and it saves your threads so that you don't have problems attaching, in our instance, your light decorative nut over the ends of these. So it's a very cool feature, most commonly found in, I mean this is from Harbor Freight, these are cheap wire cutters, but that's what those two holes are for. I wanted to show you guys that because this is a real life case where you may run into it and think, what do I do? If you got a pair of these, you're good to go. So it's your first time using Wago lever locks, what do you think? They're pretty awesome. It's a lot easier to use than the wire nuts. It's a little crooked. Um, I guess I'm the one that gets to break it if it's going to break. And then tell me whenever it looks pretty vertical. There. There's your sneak peek. We will show you it when it's all put together. Well, it's all up. It is daytime. I don't know how great the light's going to be, but let's switch it on and see how it looks. Very nice. It'll let out a lot of light, which is what we wanted. I think that light looks great, and it is a perfect example of how you can find something that, while off the shelf, doesn't exactly fit your decor, with a little bit of looking around, literally like within 10 feet of each other, we found a pendant, we like the finish, and then you found a globe that you like the finish and mm -hmm. shape. It's going to match the dining room fan. Remember the ceiling fan we have over there? It matches as far as the pattern and look of the globe, mm -hmm. although those are circular, this one's square, but it's enough to where it really does help tie the two rooms together a little bit. If nothing else, we don't have competing globes, and that's probably a good thing. Where are we off to next? I guess the laundry room. The laundry room. Cool. Turn around. Yeah, <laughs> spin around. Take a little trip down memory lane. If you were with us whenever we redid and built this laundry room, you'll remember that, well, this whole place is a lot different. We are working with two things up above. One, you're going to see a white plate. That is where the wall used to be for the kitchen. That is now a junction box for the electrical circuits because there's no wall here now, so we don't need the outlets. The other thing you're going to see is the original light box, which was where it was for our laundry room back when we started this project. It was centered at that point. 
but here you can see how it is not centered anymore and so to fix that without having to do more electrical work in the ceiling and move stuff like that we decided to get a linear light which you guys will see in a second but i did want to at least explain what you are seeing and remind those or inform those who didn't know weren't with us from the beginning what we've got going on and why it is like it is Our next step is to hold the track up in place where we want it and then I'm going to use a sharpie and put marks on our ceiling because we have to drill holes and put some anchors in place. The way this power connection connects into the track, you've got two, net, two tabs on one side, one on the other. So you want to make sure you lock the two tab into the two groove side with your track when you put it in place. Otherwise, you put it in crossways and then you rotate it whichever way until it clicks, the little tab goes down and it locks in place. That effectively creates electrical connection between this little square and the track rails inside. That's basically how track lighting works. Actually, that's exactly how track lighting works. After that, you just put your little trim piece up and then you put your lights in. All right, that looks terrible. Like it screws on the line with its own plate. If it than our car. Yeah, there's only one option, but the trim plate doesn't really fit. So, thanks a lot, Home Depot. So I'm facing this way? Mm, down more, but yeah. That's all it can do. Okay. Or would you rather it be this way and just... Yeah. That would be less in our face. Okay. Moment of truth, juice it up. Oh, cool. That's not as intensely bright as I thought it would be. No, it's nice. Some of you may be asking, why are you pointing the lights the way they are? Well, there is a method to our madness. We want the one over here at the pantry pointing inside the pantry so you can see better at night. The one underneath or above the door to shine down whenever you come in or going out. And the one over at the laundry area pointing at our washer dryer that will soon be here. So see, there is a method to our madness. Welcome to the bedroom. If you remember, if you've been here that long or if you're new, 
when we did our bedroom renovation we changed the layout structure and size of our closet here in our room the outcome of that was that the closet light was no longer in the closet it was actually out here in the bedroom so what we've done is we've made that into a junction box and i have a plate to cover that up you'll see here in a second and then we have a new outlet or ceiling light box put in our closet the new closet we needed a specific or special type of light for our closet because there are no switches to control that light. Sure, we could have added the circuitry, added the switches and everything to do that. And that was the road we were going down until we found this little guy. This is a spin light, an LED spin light. It doesn't necessarily spin on its own, but it is designed to easily go in place of those really, really cheap construction type lights like we had to begin with. This kind. I didn't know such a light existed until I was honestly wandering the aisles of the home store and found this. The cool thing is how this looks. It's basically a giant light bulb. You've got a normal, I believe it's an A27 base in the US. So you could screw this into a light fixture and consider that a light bulb. The cool thing, it's got a pull chain. On, off, ready to go. That's super cool. Now, we're not gonna put our original white light bulb fixture in place. Instead, we're gonna use what comes with this light and it is an adapter kit. This attaches to our ceiling box and has the A27 female input. So whenever we're done, we literally will put it in place and screw it in just like a light bulb. Now, this closet is very small, cramped, and right now, dark. So we're gonna go ahead and install this, put it in place, and then show you guys once we're done. Are you ready? The pull chain is awesome, and so is that. The light color is a soft white. It is not, it's not daylight or closer to the middle range like we usually do with the house, but it's a closet light and that's fine. If the camera's picking it up, it is flickering. That's probably because we're running off a generator and our generator does not give us nice even juice like we need. So at least that's our assumption. If when we have power to connect to the house and we're all juiced up, if it still flickers, we'll swap it out. But otherwise, that is a nice little light. Pretty affordable, perfect solution for what we needed, and really easy to install. Last thing to do is to install the cover for the old or original light box here. And I'll tell you, I have spent quite a bit of time trying to find the right thing to fit. I would not have expected that finding a ceiling box cover that's flat to be difficult. I have purchased some ceiling box covers that were sold in the same aisle with the ceiling boxes. Didn't fit. I purchased then some flat covers that go on say outdoor lights or outdoor round boxes. Didn't fit either. The final place that I found to fit this box was over in the ceiling fan and lighting department. Not where you buy the boxes. Over there with the light fixtures. And what I found is called a fixture plate. It fits, it goes well, it's just a little bit different colored, so I'll probably touch it up with some ceiling paint here in a little bit, but otherwise it is nice to have that junction box, because that's what it is now, safely covered, blends in with the ceiling, and still accessible if we ever need to get to it in the future. All right, we've got all of our lights installed. Like, that's it. Everything's it hooked is. up, it works, looks awesome. I really like the fans that you picked for the living room and bedroom. You helped. I did. I mean, I had a little bit of, you know, persuasion. Input. They are modern enough to look new and nice, but they're not too modern and kind of weird looking. Right. I think they will fit very good with what we've talked about the decor to be. Not that we have a really, like, concrete no. decor plan. Is there such a thing? We're not doing that. We just know what kind of finishes and overall design things we like. And that's kind of the farmhouse look. Yeah, definitely. The kind of the white colors, some dark doorknobs and cabinet hardware, although we don't have light that. Light fixtures. We'll show you about that later. Light <laughs> fixtures. Yeah, that whole thing. Well, a lot of that we're going to kind of finish and bring it all together once we move in. Yes. So we'll probably switch over, I don't know, linens and stuff like that. Well. Do you do linens with decor? I, I don't know. Bedroom. I honestly yes. don't know. I would use the same linens my whole life if it lasted. The Superman towel gave up when I was 10, I guess. No. Speaking of, before we move in the house, okay, what's left? What have we got left to do before we move in? 
We've got the back porch and our bedroom floor. Although I think it's it's the back deck. Back porch. I think front, I, don't I think know. the front is a deck as well. I don't know. I think we've been saying them wrong, but it's whatever. kind of interchangeable in my head. It is for us. Yeah, porch deck. Nah. Whatever. It's going to be big enough to be a deck. It will. It's going to be very nice. I think you guys will enjoy seeing that one. So we have the back deck. And our bedroom floor. And our bedroom floor and some trim. I want to do the trim before we move in. It won't take me long to do it. And then of course we are going to hire our electrician to do the actual home connections. That has to be done officially by an electrician. And we've also found an HVAC company that's going to do the reinstall and connection of our mini splits. And at the same time they're going to check our refrigerant levels and make sure everything is good there before it ever gets turned on. So, in that instance, it's kind of nice to be able to pay somebody to do that job. It is. Other than that, that's it, right? I don't know. We have to make the appointment to get the U-Haul and then go get our stuff and bring it here. Exciting. I think real time, all right, real time, it is July 26th. We're thinking maybe two weeks from now. Two weeks from now, we should be in a U-Haul truck or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Really exciting. Well guys, thanks for coming along as we added in our lighting and ceiling fans. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See you guys. Bye. I think there's five different settings, so that's really cool. It is all controlled with the moat. The moat, because we live in a castle and we have a moat. But I did want to at least explain, explain, well, explain something. There's your vodka. Yeah, yuck. <laughs> we'll probably leave it on the middle range setting, which is something. I don't know. Yep. Anytime Sam gets in front of the camera, we got bloopers. We're done with the fan assembly. <laughs> and you don't need screws. Yeah, you do. Don't listen to me. I don't know what's happening. We're done with what the was fan. That for? said it weird that also meant that what was used to be our indoor indoor we're always indoor i think that light looks really cool it's also a great example how the camera likes angel's face and you look away and it goes dark i don't know where what was the last thing i was talking about where would i where in the world of editing would i stop the jabber the light color so it gets put up there regardless and blast your head with wi-fi signals here you go we're done with this one. Let's go put in our another light. Our another light. Our another. Our another. Holy moly. Oh yeah, we can be cooling off while we're doing videos now. <laughs> Alright, and then do the flat hand. And then regular smile, not like shock and all. Alright, closed teeth smile. Uh, that's not normal for you. Tilt your head like this way towards my hand. Now look, cut your eyes. There you go. <laughs> there you go.